So let's do a little bit of multimeter 101 because this is a tool everybody needs to use for any kind of board level diagnosis. So let's kind of talk about it a little bit because I think it's intimidating, you know, where you're like, I see a whole bunch of hieroglyphics and I have no idea. You know, like this, this, you know, a lot of them have the, these two sort of symbols for voltage. One is V with a straight line and one is V with a wavy line. Now, I know you know the multimeter, so what does that mean to you? Like, what do you, what do you think when you see V wavy line and V straight sure. line? Sure, so I think ACDC. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I think heavy metal. <laughs> so the V with the wave is alternating current, you know, which is what comes out of your, you know, your house electrical lines. Um, right. And then the V with a straight line, direct current DC, and that's the kind of uh, current that is a uh, battery powered right. device. Any inside, any electric. Electronics, like you have your power brick here, and your power brick is converting from AC to right. DC. So once you get to the device, we're dealing completely in DC. Right. So another way you could say to kind of make things simple is if you're trying to troubleshoot electronics, ignore anything. You can just put a big sticker over anything that has to do ignore with the V wavy that. line. So that's out of the picture. Yeah. So then let's talk about the V with the, with the straight line. So DC voltage measurement. So what is voltage? What do you think of when you think about voltage? I think of potential energy. That's a little nerdy. I think of, I, yeah. <laughs> so this takes me back to my physics class, right? You have, if I have this and I lift it up yes. higher, okay, it's yep. got more energy. I added energy to it, and yep. if it drops, it's going to yep. drop with more energy. Yep. So a battery is storing energy. Yes, so it's it the is. same thing. So if it's a dead battery, it's like this sitting on the table. If it's charged, it's like it's sitting up here. Yes. So I was thinking about this earlier earlier today because. You know, I was thinking like, how, how do you sort of make this, you know, simple? And I, and I think, you know, like, let's take sort of an analogy of me trying to like blow air through a straw, like to blow bubbles in some chocolate milk or something like that. So the actual like power to blow and move that air, that power is voltage. You know, it's sort of like, you know, it is potential energy. It's the same thing. It's sort of like the, the pressure to drive something from A to B, okay. you know, energy potential energy, voltage. So we need to have voltage in order to push electrons through wires. So then while we're talking about the, the multimeter, the other things that we kind of need to understand other than volts, volts is you know the, the power, the pressure to drive the electrons through, through the, the wires. The other thing would be the A. So the A stands for? Amperage. Amperage. So what do you think about with amperage? So in your analogy, amperage is the air. So you have the force yeah. behind the air. Amperage is the electrons flowing through the wire. Exactly. So the movement. And I think of it as sort of like a, uh, like a, it, you know, it's a velocity. It's a miles mm -hmm. per hour. It's, you know, I could blow 10 bubbles per minute. You know, it's, a, it's something that has sort of a, a, a rate, right. you know. And amperage has far more to do with the size wire you want to use than voltage does. Yes. So it's how many electrons can you fit through? So you have a big wire like you'd have in a house that's going to be running a lot of electrons through it. Right. And so the size of the wire is the resistance. So that's the last piece of the puzzle. So the ohms is the is the resistance. Now it's really difficult to measure, and I tried to, t to explain this in practical board repair school as well. It's really difficult to measure that flow, the rate, the f the current, you know, the the river of electricity running through the wire. It's impossible really to measure that without sticking your finger in the wire. If that makes sense, right. you know, to actually feel those electrons flowing through there. You have to have a probe inside the inside the wire, and we and we can't really do that. And so the, a circuit board can't really do that as well. But we can infer what the amperage is if we know the other two pieces of Ohm's law. So if we know the voltage right. and we know the resistance, so we can infer we're the not going to get too much into math. But this is nope. V equals I R. So if you measure the voltage and you measure the resistance, you can calculate I, which confusingly is current or amperage. I know, and I you know I really love to just talk about it in Ohm's ohms, resistance, amps, and volts, yeah. you know? Right. So at the end of the day, here's what's important. You need to be able to measure voltage because that's the power driving the flow. You don't really need to think about the flow at all. You're never going to measure it because right. it's hard to measure. Right. You don't need to think about AC because that doesn't have anything to do with electronics. So right. all you really need to know is voltage is, you know, measuring your uh, power and resistance, which is measuring you know, how hard it is, how big or narrow the wire is, you know, how much impedance resistance there is to the flow of electrons. And so different components on the board are put there right. to restrict or allow the flow of electrons, and right. they'll all have a certain resistance that right. we'll need to measure. So, Sounds good.